chapter 6, verse 14. We've been walking through Ephesians the last couple of months, and, and we're just going to take these pieces one by one. Yeah, last Sunday we put on the belt of truth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. These words are recorded therein. Stand your ground, put it on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. Stand your ground, put it on the belt of truth and the breastplate, and the body armor of God's righteousness. I want to preach to your hearts this morning from the subject stay up last week we said with the belt you need to um, tighten up and so today with the breastplate of righteousness stay up stay up the devil brothers and sisters is our real enemy and he has real strategies and he's coming after us with everything he's got He's a persistent pest, a tenacious tempter who will wait patiently until you least expect it and then pounce on you with blows and arrows. The blows of sins, the arrows of accusation, and the devil is always ready to try to get at us either far or near and up close. Don't you know this is how he came to Jesus in Luke chapter 4? Remember when Jesus was there in the wilderness experience, the Bible says that he was tempted of the devil. And the devil came to him physically because Jesus was hungry, had been fasting. And the devil said, if you're really the son of God, why don't you turn these stones into bread? He came to Jesus emotionally and mentally because Jesus was out there all by himself. And yet the devil said, I'll give you even all of these kingdom if you would just bow down and worship me. He even came to Jesus spiritually uh, doubting and questioning the very identity of Jesus. If you really are the son of God, jump off the temple and let your angels catch you with their bare hands. And here's what verse 13 of Luke chapter 4 that really struck me. It says, when the devil had finished tempting Jesus, he left him until the next opportunity came. My, my, my. Do you see the strategy with, the, with Jesus? If he came after Jesus, and even after coming after Jesus, when he didn't get in, did he just quit? No. He just left him until the next opportunity came came. Don't you know that's the same way he's doing to us, y'all? And that's why, that is why, to protect the soldier's vital organs, to protect his heart, lungs, and stomach, what he would do is to keep himself protected from the blows and the arrows, he wore a breastplate around his chest. This breastplate could, could sometimes be made out of metal. It could be made out of links and chains of metal or even strips of leather. Uh, either way, the breastplate was a hard covering in order to stop the penetrating arrows of the enemy. And that's what I want you to know this morning, Brown, that since the devil's strategy is to knock us down and to take us out, we must stay up with righteousness. What is it that will keep us strong? What is it that will guard our heart? What is it that will keep us from the blows and the arrows of the devil? It is righteousness. It's righteousness. But it's not just any kind of righteousness. But it's positional righteousness. It's practical righteousness. It's powerful righteousness. And that's the kind of righteousness we need this morning. Let me talk about it. And I'll let you go. First of all, it's positional righteousness. The question becomes, how do we get it? How do we get it? How do we get this righteousness? And I'm going to ask you a question this morning. How good are you? 
How good are you? So-so? Heard somebody say down front here, I'm all right. You might be thinking, well, I'm not so bad. And some of y'all might be a little honest and say, well, you know what, preacher? I'm a little rough around the edges, but I am getting better. Let me remind all of us this morning, brothers and sisters, when it comes to our righteousness, none of us are good enough. None of us are good enough. It doesn't matter how long you've been in church. It doesn't matter how long you've been uh, uh, coming. No, brothers and sisters, at our best, the Bible says that all of our righteousness is as filthy rags in the sight of God. And so how are we made right with God? How are we made righteous with God Almighty? It's all about positional righteousness. Romans chapter 3, Romans chapter 3. Uh, turn back there just for a second. Romans chapter 3, verse 21 uh, through 26, because Paul is going to talk about this positional righteousness. But now God has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law as was promised in the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago. And the reason why God had to do that because none of us could have kept the law so perfect. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ and this is true for everyone who believes no matter who we are. For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty for our sins. For God presented Jesus as a sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shed in his blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in time past. For he was looking ahead and including them and what he would do in this present time. God did this to demonstrate his righteousness. For he himself is fair and just, and he makes sinners right in his sight when they believe in Jesus. How do we receive this position of righteousness? It is by grace alone. It is through faith alone. And it is in Christ alone. It's by grace alone because nobody is saved by works. It's a gift from God. It is through faith alone. The only way that we receive it, we must believe after repenting of our sin. And then it's in Christ alone. He is our sacrifice. And so what position of righteousness, and we need it, brothers and sisters, simply says, y'all, get saved. Get saved. I need to remind somebody this morning, you need to get saved. Because if you're going, the only way to stay up, you cannot stay up in your own strength. You might be good for seven days. Some of you good Baptist folks might be good for seven minutes. But look, the only way to be able to stay up under the fire and the arrows of the enemy, you got to get saved. And that means putting, that means getting into relationship with Jesus Christ. Because when we admit that we're a sinner, believe in what Jesus did on the cross, when we confess him as Lord and Savior, God takes Christ's righteousness, puts it on us, and then he makes us righteous in his sight so that when God looks at us, he no longer see our past, he no longer see our sins, he no longer see our wrongdoing, but he sees that we are covered with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And so the only way to stay up, you got to have Christ's righteousness on you. We need that positional righteousness, that imputed righteousness. But not only positional righteousness, here's second kind of righteousness we need, y'all. We need practical righteousness. Because how do we keep it? How, how do we keep it? How do we keep it? How do we keep it? Salvation only intensifies the devil coming after us. You see, after coming to know God and Jesus Christ, we now need to find freedom and live in it. Because here's the thing, Christ's righteousness covers us. But guess what's underneath? That old man, that old nature. And, 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 and y'all ain't forgot about that old nature. Some of y'all woke up late this morning 
and that old nature came out. You said some words on your way to church. I know y'all been shouting in here this morning, but if the truth be told, that old man came out this morning. And, and so here's what we need to do. Here's what we need to do. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 through 31. This is how we live it out. This is practical righteousness. With the Lord's authority, I say this, live no longer as Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against him. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. But that isn't what you learned about Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, here it is. Throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitude. Put on your new nature created to be like God truly righteous and holy well I'm glad he put these in here verse 25 so stop telling lies let us tell our neighbors the truth for we are all parts of the same body and don't sin by letting anger control you but let the, don't let the sun go down while you're still angry for anger gives a foothold to the devil if you're a thief Quit stealing. Instead, use your hand for good, hard work and then give generously to others in need. Don't uh, use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own guarantee that you will be saved on the day of redemption. And since he knew our past Pastor Baptist folks, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Let me throw in verse 32. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. If we're going to have this practical righteousness, brothers and sisters, how do we do it? Die daily to the old man. Die daily to the old man. When you get up in the morning, crucify the flesh. And not only die daily to the old man, but dress up daily with the spirit. Oh, when you get up in the morning, brothers and sisters, tell that old man, I'm leaving you at home this morning. I'm leaving you in the grave this morning. And then tell the Holy Spirit, sweet Holy Spirit, I need all of you. Give me love to make me be right. Joy to make me feel right. Peace to make me act right. Long suffering to make me stay right. Gentleness to make me appear right. Goodness to make me do right. Faith to make me believe right. Meekness to make me treat others right. Temper to make me hold out right dress up daily with the spirit and then you got to do daily the will of God stop your stealing stop your lying and start forgiving and being tender hearted to one another so not only get saved here's the second thing get sanctified get sanctified Positional righteousness, get saved. Once and for all, we got saved. We don't have to go back and get saved ever again. Salvation is once and for all. But practical righteousness says get sanctified. That's a daily process of being transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. And so when you look in the mirror, if Jesus ain't looking back, you, you, you need to do better. Here's the third one. I call this third one powerful righteousness. Because how does the righteousness guard us? How does this kind of righteousness guard us? Well, what happens is this right here. The righteousness of Jesus Christ, when it is upon us and lived out through us, first of all, it keeps us from being a stumbling block to others. 
and then it will keep us from stumbling into sin ourselves. That's the power of this righteousness. That when we are living right, talking right, dressing right, acting right, when we are walking in righteousness, it will stop us from being a stumbling block to others. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 3, we live in such a way that no one will stumble because of us and no one will find fault with our ministry. Mm, mm, mm. Bible says we are to live above reproach that folks will be ashamed not having any bad thing to say about us. In everything that we do, we show that we are true ministers of God. We patiently endure troubles and hardship and calamities of every kind. We have been beaten, been put in prison, faced angry mobs, worked to exhaustion, endured sleepless nights, and gone without food. We prove ourselves by our purity our understanding, our patience, our kindness by the Holy Spirit within us. And by our sincere love, we faithfully preach the truth. God's power working in us, we use, and there it is, the weapons of righteousness. In the right hand for attack, in the left hand for defense, we serve God whether people honor us or despise us, whether they slander us or praise us. We are honest, but they call us imposters. We are ignored. Even though we are well known, we live close to death, but we are still alive. We have been beaten, but we have not been killed. Our hearts ache, but we always have joy. We are poor, but we give spiritual riches to others. We own nothing, and yet we have everything you see righteousness becomes our powerful weapons to keep us from stumbling and to keep us from being a stumbling block to others so not only get saved not only get sanctified but get stabilized get stabilized brothers and sisters because the devil will come when you least expect it let me give you one example, just one example, just one example, just one example. I, I was riding in the car uh, this week, and, and Valerie and I went, picked up uh, some breakfast, uh, and boy, we in the car picking up breakfast. I stopped by Starbucks uh, to get our favorite drink there, and wouldn't you know it at the window, I was doing too much. On the phone talking, eating breakfast, and then ordering my Starbucks, and all of it wasted in my lap. Next thing I know, and I think, I think the guy, I think at the guy at the window, maybe he said pastor or something. Somehow uh, it came out. I was a preacher. I said, hey, I didn't cuss. You got the tell folks. Now be sure to tell folks. <laughs> you never know how the devil would try to slip up on you and get you to fall down. And that's all I stopped by to tell you this morning, since the devil's strategy is to knock us down and to take us out, we got to stay up. We got to stay up. The devil will come after us because he wants to knock us down. He wants to knock us out. He want to take us out. And so whether it's up close and personal, whether he's standing back and just shooting arrows our way, he's going to try to come at your brother with everything that he has. What God is saying this morning, you want to model love? Don't fall. Don't fall. But the way you stay up is with righteousness. Don't fall down into sin. God is looking for some holiness this morning. Because without holiness, no man will see the Lord. Brothers, don't fall down into sin. Don't fall apart because of stress. Stop letting the cares of this world uh, stress you out. I uh, get you to the point where you're about to take your mind and take your own life. Don't you know the Bible is right? Don't worry about anything but pray about everything and the peace of God. 
which passes all understanding will guard your heart and mind. Don't fall apart because of stress, but then don't fall out with other saints. Oh, y'all, we got to stop falling out with one another. Jesus said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples by the love that you have one to another. Father, make them one even as we are one that the world may know thou hast sent me. Don't fall out with other saints. Then don't fall away from the faith. When you've grown up in the Lord, grown up in church, don't you fall away from the faith. Don't you let the culture, don't you let the pressures on your job cause you to give up on the God who brought you this far. Don't fall away from the faith. Don't fall asleep and miss out on the Lord's move. Because God is working on our behalf. Don't even fall behind when your quiet time. You keep your appointments with God. Keep reading his word. Keep meditating on his word. Don't fall from grace. Somebody is looking for you to fall. Somebody is looking for you to mess up. But don't you fall from grace. Don't you fall into a trap. Don't even fall off the map and fall off the radar. You make sure that you stay connected with other brother. Don't even fall to pieces. God is simply saying, stay up. Matter of fact, brothers, don't even fall under the spell of another woman. Matter of fact, don't even fall under the spell of another man. But you better stay up this morning because God is looking for righteousness. God is looking for holiness. And that's all I stop by to tell you. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. That's why Jesus came. Because the songwriter said, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I'm so glad that when we were messed up, when we were sinners on our way uh, from the hands of God on our way to a burning hell it was nobody but Jesus who came all the way down born into Bethlehem wrapped in swaddling clothes he lived a sinless life and the reason why he lived that sinless life because he came to be our mediator he came to be our substitute he came to be our sacrifice he came to be our example that it is possible to live right even in the midst of an unrighteous world and that Friday morning after being whipped all night long beaten beyond recognition they put a cross on his back they put a crown of thorns on his head they put nails in his hands and there on the cross he died he died to save us he died to sanctify us he died to stabilize us in his word I'm so glad he died but oh he didn't stay dead but early Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hands that's all I stopped by to tell you he said whosoever will come on to me all ye that are heaven laid at and I will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn of me for my yoke is easy and my burden is light he's looking for some men he's looking for some women who will live righteously he's looking for somebody who will live holy let me tell you something y'all holiness and righteousness it's not about how long your skirt length is it's not about how much makeup you have matter of fact it's not even about how much you shout on a Sunday morning but it is about are you gonna talk right when you leave this place are you gonna dress in modesty to be a representative of God Almighty are you gonna live right when you get back behind closed doors somebody this morning need to tell the Lord clean me up clean me up save me Jesus sanctify me Jesus I want to be holy I want to be righteous and that's all I stopped by to tell you stay up stay up he brought us too far for us to fall down now stay up the enemy is looking for opportunities to come back against us but you stay up you stand tall you stay up in righteousness you get stabilized you never know when the devil is going to
to shoot something your way. But if you stay up, stay upbeat, stay positive before God Almighty, knowing that the joy of the Lord is my strength. You stay upbeat, but then you need to stay upright. You got to be prayerful. Get on your knees. Have a talk with the Lord. I need you, Jesus, to hold my hand. I need you, Jesus, to guide my feet. You got to stay upright. You got to stay upbeat, but then you got to stay updated. Stay updated. Stay in his word. Be purposeful. I want to live for you. I want to walk for you. I want to know your will for my life. I want to do what you've called me to do. That's all I stop by to tell you. He ain't going to quit. He ain't going to stop. But he's going to keep coming your way. He's going to keep coming your way. But with the righteousness of Christ, we can stay up. We can stay up. He may hit us, but we are stay up. He may, may cup a cup us, but we are stay up. I hear what you're saying, preacher, that you've called me to stay up. But can I testify, preacher? Can I confess tonight the truth of the matter? I've already messed up. I've stumbled this week. I fell into sin. But I'm here to tell somebody that if you are falling, I need some help. I need some help. If you are falling, you have come to the right place because when you got his righteousness, Proverbs said the righteous man will fall seven times, but the Lord will get him up every time. I'm glad you can recover. You can be restored. You can get up. You can rise above whatever the devil throw your way. Yeah! We need some men of righteousness. Men of righteousness. And I got to be honest, when I put on my breastplate, I looked in the mirror. I said, boy, I look good. Don't you know I'm buff? I'm buff this morning. Because I got on the righteousness of Christ. It looks good on you when you put on his righteousness. He'll make you buff. He'll make you bold. He'll make you, you useful. He'll make you fortified. And he'll keep you faithful. Yeah! Yeah! Come with me! Yeah! Yeah! His righteousness on me, lived out through me. It becomes a powerhouse where it's a weapon to fight against the enemy. If he can accuse you, if he can scandalize your name, if he can slander us, he'll do it at every cost. And that's why we need his righteousness. I need some brothers. I need some brothers of righteousness. I need some brothers of righteousness. If you committing today to be a man of righteousness. Stand where you are. Stand where you are. If you're committing today to be a man of righteousness, a man who will live right, treat your wife right, raise your children right, who will walk right, and the only way we can do it is with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Father God, you know that every last one of these men that's standing right now, God, we got a target on us. We're in Satan's bullseye. 
We can't do it in our own strength. We can't do it in our own righteousness. But today, we're relying on your righteousness. Use us to be bold witnesses. Fortify us against the attacks, the accusations, the temptations of the devil. And then God make us faithful. Faithful to your church. Faithful to our families. Faithful to our community. Lord, we want to be some buff men standing with your righteousness. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. And Lord, if somebody has fallen, oh, we want to be men of accountability who in a spirit of love and a spirit of meekness, considering ourselves, we want to reach down and help that brother up. For somebody helped us up. And we thank you right now that you are the God of not, not just a second chance, but of another chance. We claim it by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. The invitation is extended. Some